Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Ivy's YouTube channel. And today we are going to talk about a new function that has been that has come in Excel called group by. Now, what is a group by function do for us? So a group by function allows you to group and aggregate data as well as in that we have things like filter and sorting inbuilt in the function itself. Now to make it very, very simple for you to understand what is the role of a group by function. Um, if you are a pivot users, user and you know in the layout, there is the row, the column and the value. So if I'm putting a field in the row or fields in the row and I'm putting multiple fields in the value part for the aggregation, then it would create a table like one below. So if I have, if I drop items in the row and I drop the units in the value, pivot table will return a table like this for me. And this is exactly what we can get in group by without creating any pivot table. So think about group by substitute for your pivot tables and which we can drop multiple fields in the row and we can drop fields in the value and get the summary of the data. Now to understand it a little better, it is, we are going to go through the syntax of group by. So the very first three things that are there are the required arguments of the function. And after that, field headers, total depth, sort order, filter array are optional. So let's look at what is row fields. So row field is basically the column based on which you want to group. So in the example that I took, I have used items as a row field. So it could be one column, it could be more than one column. And values is the range which you want to summarize or aggregate. Third thing is a function and you can give an array of functions like some, a new function that has come up percent of, average, median, count, count A, max, min, product. So this, let's try to use the first three required functions and see how group by is going to help me. So I've taken a data over here in which I have got the order date, region, rep, the item, unit, and unit price. Now, instead of creating a pivot table, I'm going to use the group by function. So row field, if I select as items, comma, value that I want to aggregate is let's say units, comma, and the function I want to apply is sum and close the bracket, the output I'll get is item wise sum of units. Now you notice that the headers are missing in this summary. That's where the next argument comes into picture, which is field headers. Now field headers can take an input of either zero, one, two, or three. And by default, since it's an optional argument, it is zero. Zero means no headers. One would mean headers are there in the data, but don't show them. Two means headers are not there in the data that I've selected, so I need to generate it. And three is headers are present and should be shown. So going back to this summary that we have, now I'm going to use the fourth argument. I'm going to use yes and show. That is number three, close the bracket. And on the top, I've got item. Now, before we move on further, like I had discussed that it's not that we can drop only one field to group and one field for aggregation, but we can have multiples. So this time in group by, in the row fields, I'm going to take a region and rep, comma, and I want to find out average unit and unit price. So I'm going to select these two columns in value. So what we're trying to find out is region-wise, rep-wise, what is the unit sold and what was the unit price. So I want to use an average function over here. Let's ask for the headers, yes and show, and close the bracket. So I've got central region, Alex, Bill, Matthew, Morgan, and Rachel, and Smith. 
these are the unit prices uh, these are the number of units sold average and this is the average unit price so this is kind of when you drop two fields in a pivot table it groups based on the first field and then shows the second field and the aggregation. You see at the bottom, it is also showing us the total. Now let's go back and explore what do you mean by total depth. So total depth means the input can be the 0, 1, 2, minus 1 or minus 2. What does this mean? That if I put 0, I will have no totals. If I put 1, I'll get a grand total. If I put two, I'll get grand total and subtotal. And minus one and minus two is to show the totals either on the top. And if I use one and two, I will be showing them at the bottom. So if I go to the summary that we have already created, and over here, when I put a comma, I get no total. So let's try zero. So that total value is gone. If I put one over here, I'll get the grand total at the bottom for the units in price. If I put two over here, so remember we have dropped two fields over here. One is region, one is rep. So if I drop two, I will also get a subtotal. So this row has been created, which is the total of central. And similarly, a row has been created, which is the total of west. And the grand total of central east west is over here. Now, let's explore two more things. One is sort order and one is filter array. Sort order, like the name suggests, it helps us in sorting. So if you give one, it does ascending order. Minus one does descending order. However, the disappointing part is that it only sorts based on the row field. It doesn't sort based on the value which we typically would like to do. So going back over here, if I want to put the sort order as one, which is by default, it is giving me binder, desk, pen, pen set, pencil, which is A to Z. And if I go back and make it minus one, I get pencil, then pen set. So it is Z to A for the items. Like I said, would really would have loved if I could do it on the value. But unfortunately, the sorting is only on the row field that we have. The last argument is very interesting. It's called filter array. Not typically what happens in a pivot table, for example, we create a summary and the summary which is created has to be for the entire table. And if I want to create a summary based on a filter data, so it's kind of a long process. So let's say I want to create a summary of the records where my number of units sold is more than 50. So what's the process? I will have to apply filter. I'll have to filter for number of units greater than 50. I get my data. I'll have to pick this data set, move to the other sheet, then insert, and then create my pivot table. And then once this is done, then let's say I want to pick the reps and I want to put the units. So I get my rep wise total unit on the filter data where these records are where the units is always more than 50. Now, instead of filtering, copy pasting the data, then creating pivot, I can easily do this work using one single function of group by. So let's see how we are going to do this. So equal to group by, the field on which we want to work is rep, comma. What I want to summarize is units. The function I want to apply is a sum, comma, yes, and show the headers, comma, depth, let's just get the grand totals, comma, sort order, let it be one, and now comes the filter array. So what I want, I want to summarize the data where the units is greater than 50. So all I have to do is go to the column where I have units. And just like how in filter function, we put a condition on a column. 
Similar way, we are going to put that E1 to E44, which is the column of unit, has to be greater than 50. Once we press enter, I've got my reps and the total amount sold. Now, just to verify whether we got the right answer, I'm going to copy paste it right next to my pivot table. And you can see the answers are exactly matching. So why group by? Why group by and another function which has come up is pivot by? Why these functions are better than what we used to already do in a pivot table? So these functions are definitely lighter. The file size is a big problem for us. So when you put multiple pivots, it kind of makes the file heavier versus using functions like group by and pivot by, it is lighter. You can use some of the complex calculations in the functions using lambda functions. So that's another thing that pivot tables don't have in them. So hence, we, it's a nice thing to see functions like group by. It comes very handy. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you are going to practice group by. In the next video, we will also talk about the function called pivot by. So stay tuned for the next video. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do subscribe to Ivy Pro School. Thank you.